Hello, I'm Gordon Ritchie with Cole Morgan, and this is Two Minutes of Motion. This is part three of our series on electronic gearing, and in this segment, we have two axes, a leader and a follower, already set up. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to fine-tune the system. You can see at this point, the leader and the follower are electronically connected together. The leader axis encoder emulation output is set up as it was in electronic gearing part one, leader. In the leader axis, we have set up the units for the actuator. It has a two to one gear ratio, and the drive pinion provides three inches per rev. The custom position units have been set two inches, and position, velocity, and acceleration units have been set to custom mechanics dependent. Position will be in inches, velocity in inches per second, and acceleration in inches per second per second. A homing sequence to find the negative hard stop using home type 8, move until position error exceeded, with a zero position set to a 1.5 inch offset from the hard stop. The travel for this actuator will be from zero to 21 inches, which will provide a 1.5 inch buffer on each end. Different motion tasks have been entered to provide a variety of moves. These will help us understand the gearing between the leader and the follower. The follower axis is set up for electronic gearing and position mode. The encoder emulation output and feedback 2 have been set up as they were in electronic gearing part 2, follower. The units have been set the same as the leader. This will help keep the data straight when viewing the scope plots. If you remember in electronic gearing part 2, we saw the option for setting the gear ratio 1 to 1 or even 1 to negative 1. This is where the option comes in handy. The actuators have been chosen because of their mounting configurations. You can see the motors are mounted on the actuators in opposite directions. When both motors are running in the positive direction, the actuators will be moving in opposite directions. With the gear ratio set to one to one, a positive move in the leader would be a positive move in the follower and vice versa. Since the motors are mounted opposite each other, this translates into the actuators moving in opposite directions. In some applications, this might be okay, but we want them moving in the same direction. With the gear ratio set to one to minus one, a positive move in the leader is a negative move in the follower. Since the motors are moving opposite each other, the actuators are moving in the same direction. With both actuators moving in the same direction, we can grab a scope plot of their motions for comparison. We can see the leader and follower's motions are mere images of each other, exactly as we need them to be. Our system is unloaded, so tuning was straightforward. But it goes without saying, tuning plays an important part of the performance. I have removed the velocity feed forward. The position coming in from the leader is seen as position command, or PL.CMD, and is the blue line. Actual position, or PL.FB, is the green line. We can see the follower is not tracking the leader as well as it should. When we add velocity feed forward, the axis follows the leader very well. Electronic gearing is commonly used in applications such as gantry systems, conveyor systems, or those systems that require load sharing. If you take the application one step at a time, setting up your leader and your follower, and making sure that you begin with the loads disconnected so there's no physical connection between the two, follow all safety rules, and make sure you follow all grounding, shielding, and bonding techniques, you'll have a high-performance electronically geared system. I'm Gordon Ritchie for Two Minutes of Motion. Please join me next time.